woman. Let me tell you what's about to take place and unfold in Sarah's life. She's about to endure the greatest betrayal of her husband ever. She's about to be forced to live with an uncertain future. She is now going to have to sleep at night in a new place, a strange place. All of her family's gone. All of her friends are gone. Her trusted husband is no longer on the scene. He was her protector and he betrayed her. He gave her up to save his own hide. Her life, her safety are all jeopardized. She is literally in a place where her life is turned upside down. It's in these middle chapters of her life where she gets to meet the power of Abraham's God. And it's in the middle of this situation where God demonstrates his authority over every situation, not just Abraham's anymore. But this is a demonstration of God's power in Sarah's circumstances, in her situation. God steps in and gives the king a dream and lets him know that this is Abraham's wife. Make the long story short, the king comes to Abraham and says, Why did you do that? I almost committed a sin against God. And God rescues Sarah and takes her out of that place and makes him her God. Sarah is no longer just knowing God. Is Abraham's God? She's now knowing God as her God. That's the middle chapter. But for Sarah to learn that, she had to go through that trial. She had to go through that betrayal. She had to go through that fear of uncertainty and unknowing. Her family was lost. Her, her children were lost. Or her, her relatives were all lost. Everything in her life was lost. Her husband was lost. Everything she put trust in was taken away. And the only thing that was going to save her was going to be this God that she did not know. And it was in that set of circumstances that she meets God. You know, I believe that many people today are looking at our lives that we're trying to live yeah. by faith. They're looking at our lives and they're seeing how blessed we are. Amen. Listen, they're seeing how blessed you are. We're looking at our lives and we're thinking, oh, wow, this is miserable. This is tough. This is tragic. We're, we have a tendency to look at the middle chapters. The things that we have to go through in order to understand God even more. We're not looking at the rest of the story. We tend to get wrapped up in those, those middle chapters where God is demonstrating and revealing Himself. But yet the world is looking at us and going, I wish I had what they had. Because even when we're weak and we're vulnerable and we're really not walking in faith, we are that much farther ahead than those who don't have a relationship with God at all. Amen. Get that. I want you to hold that. You, we have a tendency to look at what we're going through. Is, it's just miserable and terrible and tragic. Where God is looking at it like, I'm about to establish my relationship with you in an even deeper way. And the world is seeing that. I believe the world looks at our lives and they see how blessed we are. They're watching us and their desire is to have what we have. They want to believe in this God that you believe in. They're trying to believe for what you're believing for. They want this personal encounter with Him because they look at your life and they're envious of what you have and they want that. Yet they haven't met the power of God personally themselves yet. And every time a storm comes in their life, they run to their religious doctrines. Come on. They run to their old habits. They run to their old way of life. They step out in this, in this infant faith wanting to have what you have, trying to acquire what you acquire, trying to get to know God the way you have known God because they see your life and they're envious of it. But as soon as something happens, they revert back to what they've always reverted back to. And they keep living, therefore, in this land of doubt, never getting really to laugh with joy like Sarah did, always laughing with doubt. They haven't gone through these middle chapters. They don't know how to get through these middle chapters. Listen, you cannot give birth to the promises of God without going through some pain. That's right. Without going through some middle chapters. You cannot give birth to the anointing of God, the breakthroughs that God has for you, without going through some stuff. It's just that simple. And the world looks at everything that we've got, and they want what we have. They just don't want to go through what you had to go through to get what you got. Some of you got a lot to look forward to. Can I say that? Can I say that? Some of you have a lot to look forward to because of the pain that you're going through right now. When a woman gives birth to a child, it's an easy thing. Amen. Come on, guys. It's easy. It isn't, is it? It's painful. It's called labor. It's painful. But what comes out as a result is joy unspeakable until they turn 14. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever age it is. Whatever, I don't know, it might be seven. It might be the terrible twos. I don't know, huh? Eight. No, Brooke is perfect. 
some of you have got a lot to look forward to. All the struggles you're in right now, those are the birthing pains of what's about to come. You're in the middle chapters of the revelation of who God is in your life. Let me share something with you. Uh, as I was preparing this, God just was downloading these, these things, these nuggets. Somebody right now is looking at your life. Right now, you don't know who they are. I, I guarantee you don't know who they are. You think you know who they are, and certainly you can be accurate and right in that assessment because you do know some people are looking at your life. But right now, there are people looking at your life you don't even know are looking at your life. And they feel that they can understand you. They feel like they, uh, they themselves deserve to have what you have, yet they're not willing to go through what you went through to get what you have. And listen, they cannot help you get through what you're going through because right. they don't understand. Amen. Be very careful who you're turning to in this next few years. Be careful who your friends are. Be careful what you listen to, uh, what, what, what's preached, what's taught. Be careful the, the music that you listen to. Be careful the relationships you get engaged in in these next three years. Let me give you a biblical example. Job was going through some stuff. How many of you know Job went through some chapters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chapters, come on. He went through some stuff. And he had some friends, didn't he? He had some relationships. He had some contacts. And they were there to encourage him, weren't they? <laughs> they didn't have a clue. It isn't that they were doing it on purpose. It isn't like they were, you know, telling them to curse God and die and trying to explain. They were, they were telling them there's sin in your life. There's nothing wrong with the way that, you know, your relationship with God. They were looking at everything in his life to try to explain away what it was that he was going through. They didn't have a clue. I believe we're going through stuff and people don't have a clue. Even our friends. Come on, they're trying to give advice, but they can't. Job went through some chapters. Amen. Amen. But look what he gives birth to on the other side. Look what the rest of the story is for Job. Look what he comes out with in the end. Twice as much as what he had before. Yes. Abundance. And, and listen, the, I believe that the pain that we're going through is about to change. I want to say that. I believe that what we're going through is about to change. Come on, somebody's about to have some joy in the morning. Though we weep and we, you know, and, and that weeping endures and we're going to see some joy come in the morning time. Listen, you got to speak it over your life. Don't get caught up in the middle chapters. Don't start letting death be spoken over you by your own mouth, your own friends, even your own spouse. Job's wife didn't get him. Job's wife didn't understand what he was going through. She didn't understand it. Some people won't get it even if you try to explain it to them. So don't. Because all you're going to get is the wisdom that they have. Uh, all you're gonna, if you can find somebody that's gone through what you're going through, that's the person you want to hook up. Not just somebody who's gone through it, but somebody who's gone through it and come out of it. Come on. That's the people I want to associate. Those are the people I want around me. I don't want people that are living on the mountain and never experienced a crisis or a trial. I want surrounded by me in these last days people that know God in a crisis and in a trial. <laughs> Some people aren't going to get it even if you explain it. Job's wife didn't get it. Yet Job chose to stand in the place of faith. You know, it says in Genesis 21, Hagar, Abraham's maidservant, who uh, Abraham and Sarah decided to let her get hooked up with Abraham to give him this son. It says in verse 21, verse 9, that Hagar was mocking Sarah. Can I, can I just say uh, right now in this, in, in this time uh, that you're going through these middle chapters, don't worry about people that are trying to mock you. Come on. Listen, don't, listen, don't turn your gaze to the mockers. Yes. Don't turn your attention to the, your friends who don't understand what you're going through. Don't even turn your attention to your spouse who doesn't get it. Turn your attention to him. Turn your attention to the one that can get you through the trial. I'm not saying to ignore your spouse, ignore your friends, or ignore counsel. I'm saying turn your focus and your gaze to the one who's going to get you through this thing. The one who's going to get you through the chapter. That's the one that you want to turn to. People won't always get you. Not even your own blood relatives, your spouses, your children. People aren't always going to get it. Don't worry about those mockers. Don't worry about the doubters. Don't worry about the people that don't understand. God is working through this for you. He's on your side. Sometimes you just got to believe that. Amen. Sometimes you just got to believe that. Even when you don't want to, you got to just choose to believe that. Right. Genesis 18, 14. This is what God spoke over Sarah. This is what he's speaking over you this morning. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? No. Is anything too difficult for the Lord?
anything too difficult for the Lord. At the appointed time, I will return to you this next year. I'm here to tell you there is an appointed time for you to walk out of your labor pains. There is an appointed time for you to give birth to the things of God. There is an appointed time for you to walk in the promises of God. You don't get to set the date. You don't get to set the time. Your friends don't get to determine when it is. The mockers, the naysayers, all the, none of them. God has set an appointed time for your children to get saved, for your husband to get saved, for you to walk through in the miracles and the blessings. God has set an appointed time and nobody can change it but God. Our opportunity, our obligation, I should say, our destiny is really just to walk and believe that God, you have set a time and I don't believe for it. No matter what people say, and Lord, I don't care if, if people around me don't get it, if they don't understand, I don't, it doesn't matter what it is. Listen, not everybody's going to get your storm. True. Not everybody's going to understand what you're going through. And they're going to try to offer you advice and counsel coming out. Right now, that poor family, you know, that young man that was, that was killed in Cedar City, that church is right now going to try to come up with answers. That leadership is going to try to figure out a way to, to, to help you. Sometimes you don't have the answers. Come on. Not everybody's going to understand why things take place. You're not going to get it. Some people are going to look at what you're going through, and this is what they're going to say. Ah, oh, see, you're getting what you deserve. That's the punishment of God. That's a judgment of God because of choices you make. I knew you sinned the back. Remember two months ago when you were going to make and take that and do this or do that? See, God's hand is coming against you. God is for us, not against us. Somebody say that. God is for me. Come on, He's not against us. People don't get it. They think that the hand of God is against you, and that's why you're going through what you're going through. They're going to look at your life, and they're going to judge you. They're going to look at this church and they're going to judge this church. They're looking at Sunrise and they're judging Sunrise right now. Some of those religion, religious uh, idiots. Can I say that? Yeah. yeah. People who are so wrapped up in doctrine instead of the love of God are looking at a church right now and they're saying, See, this church doesn't have true Jesus. If they did, He would have never allowed that to happen. Amen. Truth is, sometimes storms come for the main purpose of revealing the power of God. And to deepen a walk with people. Come on. His desire is to show us what only He can do so that He can become our God even more. God listen, God's no longer just your dad's God. Your mom's God. Your spouse is God. Your church is God. He wants to be your God. And I believe He's about to become your God. It's time you hear the rest of the story. It's time you hear the rest of the story. Church, Amen. we're coming out of this thing glorious, oh. spotless, without stain, without wrinkle. We're coming out of this. We're coming out of this world not all beat up and bruised up and bound up. We're coming out free, liberated, and set on fire for Jesus Christ. Come on. We're not a bound up but bunch of believers that are barely going to get to heaven. We are going to walk with authority, with dominion, power, and authority. We are going to be the one that the world is going to turn to because they're going to say, we want what you have. And we're going to be the ones that lead in through the power of God, but we, the believers in Jesus Christ, are going to be the ones that lead in this great revival in these last days. Yep. Amen. Your ending's already been written. Do you know that? Yes. Jeremiah 29 says, I know the plans I have for you. That's what God says about you. I know the plans I have for you. Plans for your good, not destruction. Come on. Plans for your good. And the Bible says in the New Testament, if God is for us, come on, who can be against us? Come on, and greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. He told Jesus told Peter, the gates of hell will not prevail. We have all these prophecies that should tend to leave us to believe that we're going to make it. Yes. And that we're not just barely going to make it and escape in flames, but we're going to go out in glory. Come on. We're going to go out in victory. We're not going to go out in defeat and Jesus reaches down to get us before we really get kicked down and destroyed. He's going to let us go out at the peak of our victory. Yes. Amen. Amen. I believe you want you focused not on the pain and the sorrow, not on your middle chapters, wherever you're at right now. And maybe you know someone who's going through some real uh, trials right now. God doesn't want you focused on that. He wants you focused on the God in those trials. Yes. Sarah couldn't focus on Abraham. She couldn't focus on getting out. She didn't know how to get out. The only thing she was left to focus on was this God of her husband. And I can promise.